years passed, and the Viking warriors continued on their pillaging voyages and grew ever richer. The Viking chief was proud of his people, but he was greedy, single-minded. He wished to expand his village, regardless of the consequences. The chief despised Admar. He'd never fought for his village and survived off their scraps. But the chief would tolerate this behavior no longer. Admar would have to single-handedly loot the forest, burn it to the ground so their village may prosper. And if he refused, he would face the same fate as his old friend Vaska. After being ridiculed by his village, Admar ran home to his hut. Admar felt hurt and lost. He loved his people, but he couldn't be what they wanted him to be. Perhaps he thought he wasn't a true Viking. Maybe some sleep would do him good. Ardmar couldn't believe his eyes. At his side was his long-lost friend Vaska. And in front of them stood the hallowed gates of Valhalla. Wait! cried Ardmar as his old friend stepped into the light. In front of Ardmar appeared a strange apparition. A forest fairy. She condemned Admar's selfish ways and his squandered potential. He had let down those closest to him. He did not deserve a place in Valhalla. But she offered him a deal. A great power. If used correctly, perhaps he could earn his place in Valhalla. But at a price. Admar woke up with excitement. What a strange dream. It felt so real. And how did this pouch get here? Was this what he saw in his dream? He looked inside the bag. A mushroom?
The villagers were bewildered by the sight of Ardmar's newfound powers. Would these powers help Ardmar redeem himself as a Viking? Perhaps Ardmar could become a great warrior just as his friend Fasco was. But is destroying the forest the right thing to do? There was loud commotion in the crowd. Ardmar! roared the chief. You dare to bring this cursed magic to our village? This is a new low. Death on the battlefield is too noble a fate for you. Perhaps the Kraken should teach you a lesson at the bottom of the sea. You can't hide from the gods, Ardmar! The chief bellowed as Ardmar leapt away. The skies turned dark. Thunder struck. Suddenly, the villagers vanished. Ardmar was shocked. Who took his people? Was it the gods? Why was he left behind? He had to find out.
Odmar wasn't used to days like this. What was he even fighting for? If he somehow retrieved his villages, would the chief still cast him out? Maybe if he could capture the one responsible. Perhaps they'd forgive him for his life of cowardice. Goblin, shouted Odmar. Why are you watching me? I have questions for you. The creature bolted away, and Odmar's attention turned to a wild boar. Please, noble beast, pleaded Odmar. Help me catch that monster.
Odmar had found a great friend in the boar. Even though they'd lost track of the goblin, the boar had given him more help than anyone in recent years. Just as Odmar bid his new friend farewell, suddenly the fairy from his dream appeared. I didn't grant these powers you could spend your days chasing monsters, said the fairy pointedly. Odmar was surprised and said, I thought you only existed in my dream. I gave you these powers for a reason, said the fairy. We need your help, Odmar. Oh, uh, help with what? Odmar asked reluctantly. My people are gone. I need to find them. You have to save the forest, said the fairy. You have to restore balance to the world. Restore balance? Odmar started, but he was interrupted by a loud growl emanating from the forest. You have to hurry, said the fairy. We don't have much time, Odmar. And in a flash, she was gone. And it was right in Odmar's path. He needed to pass it in order to enter the forest. Odmar was careful not to wake the troll. But it was too late. You dare set foot in my forest? roared the troll. I am the protector of this forest. Oh, this is a dream. Go back to sleep, Odmar urged. A dream, replied the troll. No, oh no. For you, it shall be a nightmare. You shall pay for what your kind has done to our home. 